Oh my gosh, I'm sure you've all heard by now. There's been a brazen killing by a white man. You know, the white people are always doing terrible things. Those white police officers. What's worse is these rioters. It's bad. It's really bad. No, it's all crazy. It's all made up. It's all staged. All of it. Let's get into it. Hey guys, all right, so I'm sure people are wondering what I think about this situation going on. What, what's going on? So I'm gonna do this on my backup channel because y'all know I'm already on my last leg on my other channel. But um, this is possibly the most obvious situation that um, they've done in a while. It, what's sad is it's it's as if um, I guess they've gotten so much control over the media and YouTube you know our you know everything our, our social media and everything that they can be absolutely just brazen about this and they know that they can just do the most hokey things ever and people will believe it. Um, because, first of all, we already have people, you know, unemployed. We have people upset about not being able to go outside. They're already in that anger situation and that anger stage and, and just like, forget all of it, who cares stage. Um, and I believe that they probably were kind of trying this. Um, I don't want anybody to take any of this personal. It is, it's just what it is, okay? They know that the black community is going to rise up whenever a police situation like this happens. Not, not really, they're, they're not just so much concerned about that. They know the white liberals are going to be the ones pushing it. They're actually worse than anybody else. And so that's why they had to uh, create this, this event with this, um, this George Floyd character. And to, to start all these, I don't even know what you call protests, looting, riots, just insanity. It's just insanity. And now we have them in what, like four cities? Because it, you know, it's kind of like when you're cooking, you're boiling water or whatever, it's almost to that boiling point. And then you're like, let's throw this in. And then we're gonna get them all riled up. And not only that, obviously, there are actor provocateurs all over. It seems like pink is their color for this um, situation. They always use a color to point out who's, you know, working. And so we have this guy with the umbrella guy, and then we see him also doing some other things. But umbrella guy seems to be starting the fires. Um, and yeah, you can see him right here. This one's kind of hard to see. But oddly enough, his mask is government issued or police issued. Yeah, he seems to be a St. Paul police officer. Then we have the police officer car with the number 320 on it. Funny enough, the George Floyd also has 320 on the back of his vehicle. 320. The brother, supposed his twin brother, is saying they took a life, they deserve life. Oddly enough, 320. You know, they have buses, busing in people to Minneapolis and all of these things, all of this stuff you can find online. Um, th this was quite s sloppy, actually. On I mean, we, we have George Floyd working <laughs> with this Derek Chauvin guy uh, for years at a very small bar. Like... I wouldn't even consider it really a bar. It's just kind of like a restaurant. 
a maybe a restaurant bar type thing and it's super small uh, the owners like I don't know if they actually knew each other one was security inside one was security outside I'm not sure her name's Santa Maria nothing weird about that right yeah nothing weird about the 99 cent gas in the background nothing Diesel, 99 cents. Weird, because everywhere, the lowest price you can get in Minneapolis, or in um, Minnesota at all, is 249. But 99 does have significance. Remember the Eric Garner case? Yeah, that's the police officer that did that. All very strange. Nothing weird about the Derek Showman officer, uh, his neighbors didn't even know he was a cop. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? I mean, most people know the, the cops in their neighborhood for either good reasons or bad reasons, whatever. But because they have their cars out there or they dress in their uniforms before they go to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have your, uh, in the, the actual play that they did, you know, when he's kneeling on him, um, his uniform badge is like all crooked and stuff. It, it's just, it, it's so sloppy. And then you go and check the footage. I mean, I guess I could go through all of these things, y'all, but I really think that people need to just focus on more positive things. I mean, the footage is ridiculous. They have, there's like a 30 minute time gap. There's essentially like arrows to, to where each person's gonna be standing. It's not arrows, but they're spray painted red lines. Um, his car, George Floyd's car, as well as the police officer's car, both have 320 on the back of them. I mean, It's so ridiculous. I can't breathe. Really, you can't breathe. All the while we have, what, what, what else is going on right now? Oh, you can't breathe. And, and we're also gonna push the, the mask situation all at the same time. Somebody gave me this at church. I was like, I'm not gonna wear it. And she was like, they donated to them. They donated those to us. And I was like, okay, it kind of looks like panties. But <laughs> this thing is just complete garbage and people need to wake up and not get sucked into this. Do not get sucked into this. It's disgusting. They want us all divided. But you know, the, the thing is that we need to not focus on all this. This is what they want us to do. They want us to be preoccupied with their insane asylum that they are creating um, with all of these actors and whatever. Um, that way we're not paying attention to what what's actually going on, you know, like uh, them completely <laughs> crashing our, our economy and the country and the 30% unemployment rate and all of the vaccine nonsense that they're doing. But you know what I believe this situation had to happen for? There's one thing that it had to happen for. You see, we had all the peaceful protesting, the people that wanted to go back to work, wanted to go to church, wanted to open their business, bu businesses, not wear masks, yada, yada, yada. Well, all these people were just peaceful protesting. That doesn't really work out, but we don't want them out there. This is, I'm saying what they're thinking, okay? They're saying that, yeah, this really looks bad that all of these people are begging for, to open their own businesses, so we gotta do something about it. What can we do? Well, we, it would look really bad if we just went in with the National Guard with these peaceful protesters, right? Yeah, that would look bad. So we've got to make it be escalated. Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. Let's escalate the violence, escalate the tension, maybe even shoot a couple people, you never know. And then we can write an executive order 
that anytime some protesting gets out of hand, the National Guard's gonna scoop in, disperse. That's a great idea, Trump. Oh. High five. Not just Trump, it's all of them. They're all working together. You didn't Welcome to the real world. They're all working. So yeah, they're all working together and this is their plan. They want to ensure they have a plan at hand. See, they've got people supporting this. The people that would normally be peacefully protesting and that want the jobs open back up are looking at these riots and these fires and like the just insanity going on uh, right now. And they're like, bring in the National Guard. What are you, why are y'all letting this happen? The firefighters aren't showing up. The police officers are leaving their cars in the middle of the road to be bashed in. And, you know, we've got the police officer guy that's actually starting the fires. I mean, it, it, it's silly, but that's what they want. That way, they have a reason for, you know, the moderate, conservative, non-rioting folks to say, yes, bring in the National Guard, bring them in, like, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? So they're like cheering that on. And so Trump's gonna write that executive order. Little do most people know that it's gonna affect you too, whenever you go to protest peacefully. Yeah, cause now they're gonna have it to where the National Guard's gonna go in when anything happens. Oh yeah. Their plan works out perfectly, right? Yeah, we're all being fooled. Well, not all of us. But um, just don't focus on such things. That's really what, I mean, don't, don't feed into their insanity. They want you to feed into it. Don't. That's why I didn't even want to do a video about it. But I figured mine as well. Um, it's just so silly. It's inevitable. Let me just say that. I think that there's people that really think that there's something going to be fixed. It's not. Um, it's inevitable. Like, we're at the end of our reign as um, the superpower. And this is what's going to occur. It's just gonna get worse from here. We're gonna have food shortages. We will have uh, probably more pandemic or whatever, um, but it's mainly gonna be. Okay, so, I mean, that's what's gonna happen. It, we're at the end and the best thing, that, let me say, this is probably the best advice that I can give. I don't know why this lighting is being crazy. Okay, there are seven stages of grief, okay? And especially for those who are new to the whole hoax life of what's going on, but truly to anybody, okay? And those stages are shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, acceptance. And then there, there's actually a, another one where it's uh, gratitude, but and honestly, th that's what you need. That that's what you need because otherwise you're going to stay in a rabbit hole. You're go you're going to have all of these things. But if you can accept it early on and realize that this is the plan, this is the plan is going as usual. Um, God is in control. Um, we are at the end of many things. Um, I'm not going to say the end of the world, but the uh, signs of the times are surely, surely there. And so if you can get out of the, the mindset that this can be fixed and we can go back to normal or whatever, 
then you're going to be sadly completely disappointed, okay? See, like, shock. That's the initial phase of you saying, wait, what? All, all of this stuff is, they've been doing all of these things this whole entire time? What? No way. No way. So you're, you're in denial now, no way, no way. And then you start getting in a rabbit hole and you're like, what? Then you have the anger. And you're like, how can all of these people be doing this? You know, these people that I voted for, I supported, or uh, people in business that you looked up to, uh, Bill Gates or whatever. And I'm talking to obvious people that are way past, you know, they're kind of new to this. Um, then you're going to start bargaining and that's kind of what people are in right now they're in the bargaining stage where it's like if we do this then we can fix this if we do if, if we all get together and do this then we can do this and this and that and I'm not saying that there's no way for things to go a little bit smoother but there's there's no going back um but see, you, if you stay in that bargaining stage, you're gonna be in the depression stages, which next, okay? So you're bargaining and then you realize, oh my gosh, this isn't gonna work. Depression, bargaining, depression, bargaining, depression. That's where most people in the truth community are. Almost all of them. They are in that, and some are in the anger stage, but through the anger, uh, bargaining and depression stage where it's like, we can't do anything about it. Um, and then they're like, oh, we can. We can do this. If I expose all of these things, then we can fix it. If we expose every single thing about Bill Gates' life, then we can fix it. Because people are going to listen. They're not. They might listen, but then, then they're going to be put into that situation too. Uh, and I, I mean, I'm guilty of this too. I'm, it's just, I've finally come to this realization and I'm hoping to be able to help you skip all of that and not stay in it and then move up to the acceptance and even the gratitude stages. Okay. Um, to where you're just like, you are thankful that you've had the life you had and we have been lived a life of abundance for so long when, I mean, honestly, you could have been a, way, a lot worse off. Even if you are poor, like completely just like raised poor or, and you just have everything in your life you feel has gone the wrong way. Anybody that lives in the U.S., essentially anybody that lives in the U.S. that has a cell phone that's watching this right now, you are above many people in the world because they don't even have that, you know. Um, but we don't look at it like that. We have a different bar of like success and a different bar of, of all of these things. But you know, when it just you need to come to that realization. And also another thing is I think we focus too much on this certain person and this certain person and these people, this group of these shadowy governments of the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg, the, the Illuminati, whatever, all of these things, when in reality, it's all being allowed. It, it's God's plan, and He has told us that. He has told us that we will be sent a, a great a delusion, you know, um, and we'll be sent tribulation. I mean, he specifically said that many, 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 many times that we will, we will have tribulations. And that's, see, that's where, where the whole dangerous, the pre-trib, uh, tree, oh my gosh, pre-trib rapture is so dangerous because people have this idyllic belief in their head that Oh, we're just going to be scooped up. We're not going to have to deal with any of those tribulations. We're not going to be persecuted. We're not going to have all of these things. Well, let me tell you something. Christians are being persecuted around the world. And right now, it's at the highest peak in modern history. Obviously, it was horrific 
during the initial reign of the Vatican where they were killing Christians like left and right. Um, some say 65 million to 100 million people that were killed over this. And then even with, you know, we had the people that were following Calvin against Luther, you know, the Lutherans against the Presbyterians, all of these things, this has happened um, thro throughout the years. And, and you know, that, that, that was dangerous. That, that's why I'm like so, uh, I, I, it just bugs me when people are like, well, what denomination are you? Why? Why? Your, your only question should be, are you following biblical teaching? That, sh that should be what it is. Um, other than that, it, it should be irrelevant. Um, and that's the only way that we will be able to even start to have some semblance of normalism, um, especially with the Christian persecution that will increase. I mean, it's already increasing and it's being ignored by most. Um, what, what's astonishing is that it is being ignored by these big name pastors. And I'm not talking about the Joel Olsteins and the, I don't even consider them pastors. I'm talking about like John MacArthur, you know, why is he not talking about Christians wanting to go back to church and that they should be. Why is why isn't he? It's weird. Weird, right? It's almost like maybe he's part of the whole group. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times those things are true. I don't know. I don't want this video to go on too long. Uh, I'll do a separate video about this, but that, that's really what we need to stop focusing on the exact person or group of people and focus on the truth and the light and things that are going to make your life better. Prepare yourself spiritually, mentally, physically, grow some food. I've said that many times, and I hope people are taking me seriously. The food shortage is coming so fast and people don't realize it because we, it still looks like we have a whole lot of food because they don't want people to freak out. Uh, they know what would occur, like what's occurring in Chile right now, what occurred in Italy when they first opened back up. Um, the food shortages, and that's that's going to be the the lynch point, you know, when when the real riots start. Like right now, it's just people attacking buildings. Um, if you have never looked into what occurred during the uh, like the Bolshevik Revolution and what was it? There is a video. Um, that was oh my gosh what was his name in Bosnia back in the 90s um, there is a man called Selko I, I've actually done a video and I read his um, his story it must have been taken down I can't find it anywhere but um, it it absolutely is a eye-opener and it, it's what we're seeing right now and it's I feel that it's absolutely gonna happen very soon let me see there used to be a SHTF school website yeah did I say his name Selko and you know he it's called one year in hell and but then he, he did another one that was called if I was in America if I was in America I would and that's something a lot of people need to read and become very familiar with because 
I think that's going to be soon. But that doesn't mean you need to stay in the depression and denial phase. That, that's the most dangerous thing. If you're going to stay in the depression and denial phase or in the bargaining stages, you're not going to be prepared um, for any of this. Um, it is what it is. So, um, if you would like to help support my channel, please use the PayPal link down below. Um, that would help greatly. As you know, my channel has been demonetized completely. And it sucks. <laughs> Not that I was making a whole lot, but it was, it definitely helped especially with all the research and stuff I do. But anyway, y'all have a wonderful day. Like, share, and subscribe.